this is a pretty special moment that I'm really excited to share with you. I've been wanting a proper dual manual organ for at least 20 years. And finally, yes, here it is. So this is the Legend Live from the Viscount Organ Company in Italy. It's amazing to me that some of the most highly regarded Hammond organ clones today are coming out of Italy. I think that's quite curious, isn't it? As this is quite a special occasion for me, I'd like to share the unboxing experience with you. Whilst I tell you a little bit about how I come to have one of these here in the shack, and I'll also share with you my first impressions and of course, play you a couple of tunes towards the end of the video. So let's go back in time by about one week and I'll share with you the very enjoyable experience of unboxing this magnificent organ for the first time. Viscount are perhaps best known for their classical cathedral organs, but they do also make some very cool and unique stage pianos. And last year they reached out to me about perhaps doing a demo. Now this was about the time when I got the Yamaha YC61 stage keyboard, which got me hooked on the fabulous experience of playing Hammond organ. So this got me dreaming about perhaps getting a specialized Hammond organ clone with the double manuals and all the draw bars and the controls right there where they should be. So I was doing my research and realized that Viscount also makes some of the most highly regarded Hammond organ clones. Now this is a kind of partnership, I think, between Viscount and Key B, who have been making emulations for a decade or two. So I got back in touch with Viscount to ask if they would consider lending me an organ and they kindly agreed. I guess the manufacturers aren't really getting out to trade shows very much so this is an alternative way for them to showcase their products and it's a fabulous opportunity for me to enjoy one in my own home for a while free of charge and share the experience with you so thank you so much to Viscount. Just so you know I'm not getting paid this is not a sponsored video and as always I will share with you my honest opinions, good and bad. Now, some people would call this a clone wheel organ, which is a play on the word tone wheel organ, which refers to the spinning discs in a real vintage Hammond organ. So the goal of this keyboard and others like it is to emulate as closely as possible the sound and the feel of playing a real tone wheel Hammond organ and the Leslie speaker. There are five organs in the lineup. In order of price, we have a desktop expander module, then the single manual Legend Solo. The mid-range model that we have here is the Legend Live with dual manuals. Then we have the Legend, which is the same, but with the inverse color preset keys and more authentic controls. And finally, the awesome Legend Classic with its traditional cabinet style furniture. Okay, about a week has passed since the unboxing, so why don't I share with you my first impressions after really using this keyboard for about oh, three or four hours every single day. So let's start with the build quality. The fit and finish is superb. There's no plastic here. The case is totally made of steel and we have those magnificent wooden end cheeks to give a very classic appearance. Yes, every organ should have some wood on it. Keep in mind, these are boutique instruments that are hand built in Italy in small volumes. The build quality is excellent, although I do have one small complaint about the design, which I'll share with you later. You know, even Italian Ferraris and Lamborghinis have their quirks. Personally, I would have preferred a darker color wood perhaps, and I think it would look better without the engraved logo on the side, but that's just my preference. You might think it looks cool. And it does come with a music stand. I think that's fantastic. On to the controls then. Well, the main controls are all in the exact same place as on a Hammond organ. So you'll feel right at home if that's what you're used to. Although they are not exactly the same type of switches, these buttons feel nice and clicky and have bright LEDs. So at a glance, you can see exactly what the settings are. 
There is no screen to be seen anywhere, which I think is absolutely perfect. An instrument of this category should not have any kind of display shining at me. We do have a really generous amount of knobs that you don't get on a vintage Hammond organ that you can use to customise the sound to your preferences. If you want to go even deeper, there is a PC editor, which we'll demonstrate in another video. The built-in rotary speed lever stick thing is a really welcome addition. These are normally provided only as expensive optional half moon accessories. So really great to see this included. And this would be one of the major selling points for me. It really adds to the experience. Viscount have not held back on the number of drawbars. You get four sets of nine drawbars, plus two drawbars for the pedals. That's 38 in total. Count them if you like, which is just like the most fully featured classic tone wheel organs. These drawbars are smooth in operation without the ratchety clicking. I think the vintage organs use both types depending on the model. I'm not quite sure, so let me know in the comments. These particular drawbars are smooth, they are made of metal and feel great to use. I will make a separate video where we give a detailed tour of the entire front panel and all its interesting controls and a tutorial about how to use them properly. But we'll save that for a separate video, I think, if that's okay. Some food for thought then, with all of these physical controls, I assume this would make a fantastic controller. If for some reason you wanted to play a VST emulation of the Hammond organ, perhaps the official Hammond one, Blue 3 or VB3, whichever is your preference. Uh, the VB3, by the way, is the same model that is used in the Krumar Mojo organs. So you could play that one as well from The Legend. I'll save the details about the connectivity for a separate video because there are some very interesting features here that I've never seen on any other keyboard before. To cut to the chase though, this organ seems to be very well equipped compared to the competition. And very nice to see an internal power supply and a standard IEC style kettle plug. On to the all important question of the keys and how they feel. We get, of course, waterfall style organ keys. I'm very sure that these are the Fatar keybeds used in several other instruments. For example, the Nord Electro. It certainly feels like it. Overall, it feels like a very high quality, sturdy, robust, and it is very satisfying to play. And you get, because of the design of the case, the metal case, I think, a real satisfying thunk when you press the keys down. It feels awesome. When I was doing my research, some people suggested it was quite a stiff action. Now I certainly see where they are coming from because it's quite a bit heavier to press down than the Yamaha YC61 that we have. For me personally though, it's a complete non-issue. I really like the feel of these keys. They are light enough and I can play quickly and accurately. They have a quite attractive, slightly off-white color, which I like. For those of you that are into the whole high trigger point debate, well, the organ sounds trigger after you push down the key just a millimeter or two, which I believe is what you want. The only thing I can find to complain about, and I'm a pretty picky guy who pays a lot of attention to detail, but the only complaint I have is that the metal panel between the two manuals, that's the organ word for keyboard, that metal panel has quite a rough texture and a rather sharp edge on the top. You'll have to take care when doing a palm swipe or conga slaps or stuff like that. If you drag your fingers or hand along the edge of the metal, you might actually hurt yourself, I think. Just running my finger along it now, I feel a bit nervous. It's a surprising oversight as the other metal parts have nice rounded edges and this one is in a crucial position. Actually, the feel of this part is not as solid and reassuring as the rest of the instrument. Maybe this is something that could be improved in the future. Well, how does it sound then? This is always going to be subjective. And remember, if we compare any old vintage Hammonds and Leslie speakers, then they will always sound different. For myself, I think it sounds significantly better and more realistic than any of the other clone wheels I've ever played. The bass has so much presence and a glorious woody thunk to it. And when comping on the lower manual, it sounds warm and rich whilst never getting shrill. Playing lines or chords on the upper manual 
with the first three drawbars out and percussion on sounds so good it's a really fat and thick tone which is truly inspiring to play. You can play simple stuff and it still sounds funky and great. The rotary speaker simulation is also incredible in my opinion. You can really hear what the horn and bass rotor are doing. I think a deep exploration of the sound of this organ will be a topic worthy of a separate video. For now, let's finish off with the demo and some tunes. Okay, I'll share with you a few tunes that I'm working on. Don't judge me too harshly. I'm still learning my way around the organ here, but we'll do a funk groove for you. Uh, this instrument, by the way, has six different tone wheel models built in. I'm using the one that comes when you power it on, which is a very early 1930s Hammond with a tremendous low end. You'll hear that for yourself. I'm going to switch the Leslie to the brake mode and I'm going to switch off the chorus for now. I'll play something a little bit funky for you. Awesome. Yeah, I love that so much. That big bass end is really wonderful. Now I'm going to switch to a different organ model. We'll go to a B3. Switch off the Leslie. We can enable that like so. You can hear a slightly thicker sound, but we do lose some of the bass. So I can compensate for that by using the pedals to lower function. And I can mix in some of the pedal tones to really fatten it up. And I'll have a go at playing some jazz blues for you now.
instrument. That is so much fun to play. Yeah, sound is incredible. I hope you agree. Was I speeding up during the course of that song? Yes, I think I may have been, but it was so much fun. I was getting a bit excited. I'll work on that. I've got many other videos planned for the legend here. I'd like to give you a full tour of the control panel and explain how the controls on a Hammond organ work. I'll also give you a tour of the controls, the connections on the back, because this has some very unusual features that I've never seen on any other keyboard before. Of course, I'll do many more sound demonstrations for you and share with you the journey of learning how to become a better organ player. Perhaps I'm hoping we can even get some really fantastic skilled organ players in to demonstrate this for us so we can see how it sounds in the hands of a real skilled player. So that's some of the things I have lined up for you in the future. So please subscribe if that's something that's interesting to you. Thank you again to Viscount for making this video possible. And of course, thanks to you, my viewers and subscribers, without which it wouldn't have been possible. A special thanks, of course, to my patrons and channel members. Thank you so much to you one and all. I'll finish off with a special little bonus performance. The thing about the organ, you have to be so precise when you're playing because you get this really percussive sound. The key click, the sound of the percussion. If your timing is slightly off, it sounds so sloppy. It's really challenging, but that's why I love playing the instrument. It adds a new dimension to the playing on the piano and most other instruments, it's slightly more forgiving, but this, that spitting sound at the start. Also, when you release the notes, you have to be so precise. That attack is like a snare drum. Another reason why the organ is such a hard instrument to play is you need to get that independence between your left and right hands. Here's another song I've been working on as a bit of an exercise to try and get this down. So keeping a solid bass line whilst you're comping and soloing with the right hand. So here's, here's what I'm working on. I hope you liked it. I'll see you next time. Cheerio.